Well, we know the capital is in the central. And of course, in, when we talk about the central, we're talking about Buganda region. And of course, a very, you know, we're looking in terms of potential. Uh, indeed, it does have potential in the area of investment in the country. Now, doing business, especially in Uganda, uh, the kingdoms are key to link to the investors. Now, the Katikiro of Buganda, Charles Peter Maiga, believes that Buganda Kingdom has the potential to front this development. about four clauses where we have big issues. We believe that the farming of coffee, of any crop, there should be free entry and free exit. To require UCDA to ensure that if you grow coffee, they check your soil, for example, is being academic. We have two million households that grow coffee. Excuse me. You see there with 50 employees. How they do that? And when you regulate at the upstream, people will exit coffee. I'll give you an example in Kenya. Kenya is produce about a million bags of coffee. And over regulation and production has allowed farmers to exit coffee. To go to farm maize, to go to farm tea. Because they are told this and that and that. So I think when it comes to who wants to go in to grow coffee, who wants to get out of growing coffee, how you look at your, we should also respect the farmers. They are rational human beings. If something makes sense, they look after their coffee. So we support the bill in as far as those clauses that will improve the quality and productivity, but we have very, very serious reservations when it comes to introducing barriers to entering and, and, and farming coffee. I will go by the words of which you uh, Charles Peter Maiga. He said it's better to raise... And, and no one actually knew about the plight and cause of fistula until His Majesty the Kabaka picked it up. And so for the first three years, over 500 million was generated out of this run and given to support the plight of fistula and the women that go through and not within Buganda, but all over Uganda as a nation. And uh, Chitov Hospital uh, became the pilot uh, and, the, and the spearhead of this. So that everyone who went to Chitov Hospital and so many other hospitals uh, would be able to get the, the cure and the treatment of fistula. Three years down the road, we started tackling uh, sickle cells. Now, those of you who don't know what sickle cell does, 31% of the people that live within this region. Young babies, young children that are born out of no knowledge, out of sometimes parents that have not tested before they go in, into marriage, uh, are, are, are infected by those damaged cells. They are called sickle cells in the body. And so His Majesty picked this up when Buganda and other regions actually were applied about 40%. As we speak now, it has gone down to 21%. And the awareness that we have created three years, 700 million shillings donated to the Central Public Health Laboratories, which is the entity of government of Uganda, which shows that this kingdom actually is not only for Uganda, but a kingdom for everyone. And uh, thank you for the answer. And 700 million to buy sickle cell testing kits, because this is a very expensive disease. Uh, I remember the, the first time the particular went to hand over a gentleman came with a boy, a young boy, 18 years, who has a level of immunity at zero. That means anything that attacks him will end up killing him. Now, the, pre the treatment for this young man within one year was at a tune of $100,000. But the privilege that he has is that his father works for the Bank of Uganda, and the Bank of Uganda is able to take care through their medical insurance. Now, just imagine someone who comes from 
Masajia, where I come from, in, the, in, 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 in the way beyond, where the road is even impassable and cannot afford even a single dollar for a sickle cell kit. And so this kingdom, 500,000 sickle cell kits, 700 million shillings given this year towards the plight of sickle cell for the last three years from this birthday run. And that has moved the levels that have gone there. Now, just within six years, we have lifted this run to become the fifth on the African continent and in the 19th in the world. Round of applause for Coca-Cola. I want to thank Tascamal. You... In the last five years, the client of Centenary Bank has moved from 1.1 uh, million customers to 1.7 million customers. Um, I want to thank Comfort Homes, Majestic Brands. I want to thank BM Buganda, the Buganda Kingdom, and the institution of the Kawaka is a very, very strong brand in its own right. And so his majesty Kabaka has us to produce something that will get the young people away from dying while they are trying to work, to get them a beer that will give them honor and respect. And so out of cassava, which the farmers within the region are, are growing, Ngule beer is brewed. So after you have the cassava sold to Uganda breweries, you can remain with enough money to buy, to pay school fees, take your family to a health center that is good, but also remain with some money to buy in Gude. So you are, you are hitting a million bucks. And so Rendo was uh, unveiled. Uh, Rendo is a purified six value lens uh, water. And that's why you see it very clear. And I have had so many comments from people that say, I think Rendo is the tastiest water that we have ever had. Those evenings where we, we all seem to be suited up. Please meet the boss. Ladies and gentlemen, have you seen, this is a platform for young entrepreneurs to meet the boss interface. And as you've just experienced it here, it's a platform where we have a one-on-one -on -one with the youth and where we expect answers there and then. If you don't give us an answer here, then we don't, we don't, we don't expect an answer. So this is part of the team and you're welcome. Uh, it is a platform where we reward and appreciate outstanding individuals in society, like our boss, OHT Watch House, Peter Maiga. I didn't know the people behind this idea, but I was intrigued by the general theme for which they conceived it. Their letter to me, which sought an appointment, said that their company's objective is to promote social development and that they want to enlighten motivate and empower entrepreneurs and others who seek inspiration in the different fields where they work or operate. According to them, the Kingdom of Buganda has potential which should be of interest to entrepreneurs and to local and international investors like perhaps comfort homes. Oh. <laughs> they also said as Katikiro, I've made some achievements. It's them who said it, not me. These people. Others write about very grand ideas, which on the face of it, look impossible to implement. 
or even which sound too good to be true. Somebody wrote me about a project which was going to yield 150 billion shillings. And I'm like, are you serious? Somebody who ordinarily would be expected to be experienced. So the Upton Group idea sounded realistic. Without mentioning that it rotates around my preferred themes on social and economic development. They also gave me reasonable notice. So I requested my staff to invite them for a discussion. When I met them, I was pleasantly surprised that they were so young. You know, when they came to my office, I had a meeting with some other people and I, I escorted them out. And I saw young people seated in my outer office. I didn't know these were the people I was waiting for. I thought these were older men and women. Now, the youthful, the youthful stage of our lives is the most crucial because it largely determines what we turn out to be. I don't know whether there are any Nigerians here, but what I'm saying is the truth. When they discovered oil, they forgot about agriculture. They built a brand new capital and forgot to care about hospitals and schools. Who does this? Who needs a brand new capital? People need education and health. They went for skyscrapers, but forgot to collect the garbage from the streets. Why do, you small, why do you forget the small things? Africa has an appetite for investors, for dams, for industries, big projects. Everywhere you look, we tend to think that is the mark of development. This is my opinion. The starting point, the starting point should be the ordinary person, the ordinary people enabling them to earn whatever little they may realize from their seemingly humble trades, but ensuring that these earnings are consistent. Eventually, these little earnings will stimulate their consumption, and the resultant demand will create the need for industries. What, when is the right time for industries? If that's the pattern you follow, the industries that will be set up will be those that have a bearing to the lives of ordinary people if we support them to earn from simple undertakings. Look at the need for shoes, for example. If you can earn money from one Terimba, you may soon realize that you need to set up a factory in Singo for shoes. I went there in 2016, and most of the kids were walking barefoot all over the place, and every other home had a dish for BBS Terrifying and NTV, I presume. And I asked the parents, how is this possible? You can afford solar panels and TV dishes. You can afford shoes. I told them I'm coming back after a year. I want all the kids to have shoes. Don't tell me about poverty, how about the dishes? I went back exactly a year, it was the 16th of November, and about 80%, 75% of the kids had shoes in that school. <laughs> Consult all the time. Always be thirsty for knowledge. You guys don't read nothing. How do you survive? I just don't know how you survive. I look at you, you've never read a book. It's September. How do you survive? But the biggest demotivator anywhere is lack of integrity. You know, while everyone else is throwing in everything to grow the business, someone else is making under table deals to enrich themselves. It's terrible. It's terrible.
That cannot be our culture. There is a quote by this colonialist, which the which Tiwanamia was sent me. Some guy who came to Africa, an explorer, and he said he didn't meet beggars, he didn't meet hungry people, there was no corruption in the 19th century. Where did this come from? Where did it come from? We must find an answer to corruption. Mohanj, we must find an answer to corruption in the Ministry of Transport where you work. Because he talks to me, tells me I should offer solutions or, or whatever else he, he wants me to do. But what about the corruption in the government, in the public service? How about corruption everywhere in the private sector? Every organizations or companies that aren't efficiently run with corruption as the common denominator, don't outgrow their infancy. So Uptown Group and everyone else here, if you want to grow and you are not efficient and there is corruption as the common denominator, you, you can, the company can't grow. And that's true for countries as well. And anyone live, residing in any African country requires little convincing here. It's, very, it's always tough, and you have to have staying power if you are going to realize progress and success. Because success is purely happiness. It is not the amount of money you have in the bank. So ladies and gentlemen, success isn't wealth. Success is the happiness that what you do brings you. Because when you have, I'll tell you my story. When I was young, I loved cars. When I was in the university, I dreamt about cars. When I finished all this, the first thing I bought was a car. Actually, in my class, I was the first person to buy a car. But I, but I didn't have a TV, or a fridge, or a good bed. And I had this feeling that once I have a car, I'm going to be happy. So I drove around the first few days. We had parties in Jinja. I would get all my friends, put them in my car, we contribute fuel. I drive them to Jinja, we part all night. I wasn't married, I was free as a bird in the air. You know what that means? Now, after the party, party, after, party, after. I know it. Very wise words, I must say. And it's very important for us to think about the tiniest of things that we often tend to ignore and, you know, run for the things that we feel like